Hello, this is my next video in my DevNet series of videos. We're learning Python, and we're learning how to do Python scripting because I'm interested in getting my DevNet Associate Certification from Cisco. And in order to get that certification, you need to know Python basics, Python programming basics. So we're working towards learning Python. And as I've said in the previous videos, I've been using a couple of things here to help me learn Python. I've been using the book Python Crash Course by Eric Mathis from No Starch Press, which I recommend you go out and get. And also I'm using W3 Schools. And you can see here w3schools.com Python. And just look at all the great uh, menu items here on the left for getting the different topics like variables and strings and lists and tuples and sets and dictionaries and things like that. And that's what I'm looking at right now. So today, what we're going to cover is chapter six, and I'm going to follow along with chapter six in the book Crash Course on Python, and it covers uh, dictionaries and sets. And so, but I thought it'd be a good time to review because of the previous two chapters talked about lists and tuples. So what is the difference here? So a list is like an array, it's ordered, it's changeable, and it can have duplicate items. A tuple is ordered but unchangeable, and it can also have duplicate items. In other words, the items in the tuple or the items in the list could be the same thing. Uh, it could be the same string or the same number or the same, um, the same object, the same piece of information in that list or that tuple. Okay, then what about a dictionary and a set? So a dictionary, it's not ordered, it's unordered, but it is changeable and indexed. It does not have duplicate members. Also, a dictionary is organized, it's an organized, um, basically, set of key value pairs. Key value pairs, and we'll look at that in a second here. And then a set is unordered, it's unindexed, so it doesn't have an order, but it has no duplicate members, so you can't have duplicate members like you can in a list or a tuple. Uh, dictionaries and sets don't have duplicate members. Now if we wanted to create one, it's pretty easy when you look at creating one. So let's say I have the variable my list, it equals, and then here's my list in between brackets, the string dog, cat, and bird. And this could be integers as well or other items, right? So my list, dog, cat, and bird. If I have a tuple, it's dog, cat, and bird, but it's in between parentheses. So that's how you would create a tuple with the same items in it. Now this one would be unchangeable, whereas this one we could change the items and the order and all that stuff. Okay, uh, this is my set. My set goes in between curly braces and you can see you could put the same items in the set. And the set is unordered, it's, uh, it's unordered, it's unindexed, and it can't have duplicate members. So I couldn't have dog, cat, bird, and then dog again. Um, I couldn't do that, it has to be unique members. And then here's my dictionary. And my dictionary is also between curly braces here, but it's got key value pairs. So here's the key dog and the value is the name or the string Petey. And cat and the value is Wednesday. Whoops, I forgot my, my double quote there. And then bird and then the value is Sam. So this is the key and this is the value, and it's a key value pair. So there you have it, lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets. Now let's practice using them, kind of following along with the book, doing some of the stuff in Python. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so in the book, we'll start off, we'll use Python 3 interpreter, and he starts off by saying something like this, alien equals, and then creates a dictionary. And the dictionary he puts, first of all, something like this, color, okay, color, colon, and is green. So we have colors green. So that could do that, that'd be a dictionary right away with just one item in it, but I'll put a secondary item. So we'll have, and then points with single quote, colon, and points, and this time we'll have an integer, and points equals five. Notice the integer does not get uh, single quotes around it. So now I have, I have, uh, I should have a, a dictionary. And I could say type um, alien. And you can see it says class dictionary. So there it is. Now let's print alien 
we'll print that variable, which is a dictionary, and you can see it outputs the values inside of it. Now, if I want to just access one of these members, I could say print, and then in between parentheses, I'll put a little white space here just to make it easier to see. I'll say alien, and then between brackets, kind of like you're doing with a list, let's say we want to just access color. So something like that. So print alien color, and you can see it says green. And if I want to access the points, I'll just say points, and you can see it says five. So I can access the different um, key value pairs by just calling them out here. Okay, now if we wanted to add an item to our dictionary, it's as simple as saying alien, and then in between brackets, let's say we wanted to add something like, this is a game, let's say, and we have an alien, and the alien has an X position on the X axis. So we could say alien X position, and then equals, zero or something like that. And then I'll say aliens y position equals maybe the integer 100 on the y axis. So now we've added two keys and two values to the dictionary. And if we print the dictionary here, you can see that those were added and added on at the end. And so now our dictionary has um, four items in it four key value pairs. Okay, excellent. All right, moving on. This time what we'll do is we'll say robot equals open and close parentheses, and that creates an empty dictionary. And then we could just add items in. Robot, and we could say color equals silver something like that. And then we could say arms. We'll give it some arms. It's got a lot of robot arms. Arms equals the integer five. And then if we print robot, it should have those items. And it does. That's great. All right, now um, let's say we want to get rid of an item. So I'm gonna try to get rid of an item. So I'm gonna say del for delete, delete robot, and maybe I'll say delete robot arms. And now if I print out the robot, it should only have the color, and there it is, it only has the one item, color, the one key value pair, because we deleted arms, and so it deleted the key and value for arms. Okay, then we're going to do something else. We're going to say here, okay, languages equals, and then we'll open up with a curly brace here, and then I'll indent one, let's see here, two, three, four, and I'll say gen is Python, comma, and Sarah is C. And, and I, I think I pulled this idea right from the book. And then Edward is something like, whoops, something like Ruby, comma. Notice I have to put a comma. Now I'm just different way of writing out the dictionary. And then the last one is fill. And fill is, I might have changed the items here just to, and we'll say fill is also Python. Now, can I put two of the same items? Yes, I can. Also, I can even put, um, JavaScript wouldn't like this creating an object, but I could put a comma there according to the book. Then I can end it with a curly brace. Let's see if that'll let me do it like that. Okay, it did. Now, in the book it said you had to indent over the curly brace, but I don't believe that that's the case. So let's say print languages, and there it is. All right, we have our four 
key value pairs inside of languages. All right, so we can take this and we could say something like this. L, the variable L, let's say we say L equals and then languages, uh, languages, and then we'll say Edward. So L equals languages Edward. Okay, so now if I print L, I should see Ruby. So Edward, language is Ruby. His, Edward's favorite language is Ruby. And I said L equals languages Edward. And then if I print L, I see Ruby. Now, what if I say another thing to do is, now let's say that you were, I, I, and I believe the book goes something into this like this. So let's say um, you wanted to print, and you want to print languages. We could also do it this way. Edward. I forget what is said in the book about this, but I'm going to try to go there. So print languages Edward. So we can also do it like that and we see Ruby. Now what if you tried to print a key that's not in there, like Zoe? And you can see you get an error. Um, so there is another method, and I believe, I think that's what's related to is, is having a different way of getting an error or something like that. Another way to get an item out of there would be to say something like this. L equals languages dot get Edward. Okay, something like that. And I got to put that in between single quotes. Okay. And we can, in other words, we can use the get method to pull an item out of our dictionary. And then I can print L and you can see it says Ruby. Now if I do that same thing, except this time I say get Zoe, right, where there's no Zoe, and then I print L, we get the value none. So by using this get method, instead of erroring out and maybe causing our program to stop or crash or have to deal with an error, we could just use a variable and the get method and then when we print it, we get a different response. We get just none would be returned. And so maybe our program could then handle none or be written to handle none or something like that. Now let's try to reassign something. So we'll say, what if, let's see here, what if language is, I'm just gonna go straight to it. What if languages fill, what if Phil's favorite language which is currently Python, what if it changes to JavaScript? So I'll do that, languages fill JavaScript. Now, if we print languages, we should see a change. Let's see, reassignment, so to speak. Print, um, whoops print languages without the single quotes because we're printing our dictionary. And you can see Phil's language, favorite language is now JavaScript. Okay, let's keep going. So the, the next one that I'm gonna do is let's, let's loop through languages. We'll say for x, our variable will be x, in languages, uh, like that, for x in languages, now this is a loop, so it gets a colon here at the end. So for this variable in languages, which is our dictionary, then we're gonna indent and we're going to print X. So print X. And we have to hit enter twice, and you can see it loops through each person in the, in the or each item in the dictionary, but it's, it gets the keys. So Jen, Sarah, Edward, and Phil. So it loops through and returns the keys in the dictionary, not the values, just the keys. So if we want the values, what we could do is we could say for x in languages dot values and use the values method here and then print x 
and you can see it outputs Python, C, Ruby, and JavaScript. So notice the difference in here. For the, here it was 4x in languages, which is our dictionary, and then we print x and we got the keys. But here we said languages.values and print x and it returned the values. You know, in other words, their favorite languages. Jane's favorite language is Python, Sarah's is C, Edwards is Ruby, and Phil's is JavaScript. Okay, the other thing we could do is we could, um, we could do it another way. We could say 4x in languages, I think dot items. Let's try dot items. And then you get both of the, you get the key and the value pair. And then the other thing that we could do is we could say for instead of x let's use something else like for the variable key and then comma value in languages dot items for key and value in languages dot items and then we could print and we'll use an f string this time we haven't used an f string in a while so f string so it's going to be an f string just like that and then in our f string we'll put new line the key is and then in between curly braces the key variable like that so the key is just like that print uh, f uh, that looks good and then I'll do the same thing except this time and I'll put value and then we'll pass it the value variable that looks good and we'll see if it works key gen value Python key Sarah value C key Edward that looks great okay cool so uh, that's another way to do it notice we use two variables for that so that was pretty fun we could use different, uh, we could do different um, variables if we want, instead of key and value. You could say for, you know, X and Y in languages dot items, but that's not as, as, as good to use as opposed to something like name and language, which is a more descriptive way to work with it. We could say that for name and for name comma language in languages dot items. That would be a better way to work. One, two, three, four. Print, and we'll say this time name dot the title method. And language, whoops, dot maybe the upper method, uppercase and do that and that and looks like we got gen but I know what I did wrong I misspelled language here and so gen printed correctly and then I get an error because when it tries to print it says langage langage uh, we get an error there so we could try to do the whole the same thing again and try again so we'll say four and print name title and we'll just fix that here and hit enter and enter and there it is um, titleized uppercase titleized uppercase titleized so that worked nicely so the video is getting kind of long and we haven't gotten yet to sets we've been talking about dictionaries and I said we'd talk about sets so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set our dictionary languages fill back to Python. Let's see here. So now if we print languages, we should see that gen is Python and fill is Python. So we've got kind of a, a duplicate scenario here, right? We have a duplicate scenario. All right, so what we're going to do is you know, Jen is Python and Phil is Python. So they do something that's kind of interesting in the book, and he does this. He says print, 
and he says the following languages have been mentioned. The following languages have been mentioned. Okay, the following languages have been mentioned and oh, we're using the interpreter, so that doesn't really matter. Now, the languages that have been mentioned are Python, C, and Ruby, but Python was mentioned twice, so we don't want to list that twice. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the dictionary into a set. And we're not going to put the dictionary into the set. We're going to put the dictionary values into a set. And he does a loop to do that. So let's see what he does. He says, for language in languages, which is our dictionary, but languages dot values, the values, not the keys, but the values. And then we put a colon. So we're going to loop. And let's see here for language. Ah, no, he does it slightly differently for language in the set. And in the set, in the set, we're going to put in the set languages dot values. Perfect. So there's the difference. So for language in a set. So this is going to create a set on the fly and the set is going to be populated with the values in our dictionary, meaning Python, C, Ruby, and Python. Now we'll see what happens with this. So we hit enter and then one, two, three, four, and okay print language dot title all right let's see what happens here uh, whoops we need print language dot title and enter and enter and you can see Ruby C and Python so in other words Python was not was not duplicated. I mean, it was uh, it didn't duplicate. So with the set did not allow the duplication. Now, if we just say, how do we create a set just on the fly? We would do it something like this: languages equals, and then between curly braces, we would put what we wanted in there. So we would say um, Python. Ruby and let's say JavaScript and that's how you would do it now we oh we need, we forgot I forgot the single quotes so that would give us a set now th this set cannot have um, duplicate items what if we tried to put a comma here and put another Python let's see if we get an error on this so it allowed it to happen, but if I say print languages now, let's take a look at it. JavaScript, Ruby, Python. Notice that <laughs> I tried to make a set here. Notice it's not key value pairs. It's just a single item, but I put a duplicate member. Okay. Then when I printed out the set, it comes back. The duplicate's gone. Also, it's not, it's unordered. Notice there's no, I put it in Python, Ruby, and JavaScript, and it comes back JavaScript, Ruby, and Python. So it's not in the same order in which I put them in. So that's curious. Now, the other thing that gets covered in the book, which I'm not going to have time to do, is he puts uh, dictionaries inside of lists. He puts dic dictionaries inside of other dictionaries. And so, and lists inside of dictionaries, dictionaries inside of lists, so you could put these items you could put a uh, you could put three one thing he does is puts three separate dictionaries into a list or into an array so now the items in that list are dictionaries they're not strings they're not integers um, so on and so forth so but we don't have time because the video is already going pretty long so I'm gonna stop the recording and make the next video pretty soon